one bang energy drink, five hours of driving, 15 plus stores later. We got it, folks. It's, it's the armored assault tank. Felt like a Mr. Beast intro there for a second. I actually didn't get this at Target. Uh, it was actually Walmart this time, so that's pretty great. Uh, Target hasn't been helping me out at all, as you might have uh, picked up from the, my last video. It, Walmarts, like, actually have these. Uh, I, I went to a lot of Walmarts, but there was only one Walmart that actually had this. I'm so, so surprised that I was actually able to get this. I was not expecting to see it on the shelf, but here we got it, and it's almost the same popularity level as the 501st Battle Pack because of the Ahsoka minifigure. We haven't got a uh, minifigure of her since 2015, so that's definitely going to pump the popularity up quite a bit. Also, the inclusion of the 332nd Clone Trooper is definitely going to grab some people's attention, and I am excited to review this. And wait, before you think I'm, I'm super crazy, because I'm a little bit crazy, but I, I didn't just get that set from all that traveling and shopping and stuff. I... I also got another one of these, so I've, I've got two now, so that I'm not that crazy. Just a little bit. So this is set number 75283, the Armored Assault Tank, or AAT. Has 286 pieces and retails for $39.99. A little bit steep on the price side of things. Of course, we're all going to pay that price because it comes with Ahsoka's Clone Trooper and, of course, Ahsoka herself. As far as the build looks, it doesn't look terrible. I'm actually pretty excited to build it up and see how it looks for myself because I think a lot of people don't like it. Up here at the top corner you get the Ahsoka Trooper printed there, probably the uh, uh, the video game render which looks pretty good. And then on the back of the box of course you've got just some of the play features as well as just a different angle at the build and uh, different looks at the minifigures. And it also says play it in the Sk uh, Star Wars The Skywalker Saga so obviously that means uh, this vehicle is going to be in the video game which is going to be pretty cool to see. Again, it always kills me to do this when I don't have like a duplicate, but hopefully I'll be able to get one first thing on September 1st, as long as they're in the Lego stores. Looks like there are a couple parts here that uh, are weirdly covered in dust for some reason. Uh, they weren't even in a bag, so I kind of got a jump scare there. <laughs> of course, here's the instruction book with the QR code to get the digital version on the Lego Life app. In the back, you got the piece count, as always. An ad for all of the other sets in this wave. Uh, super excited for that one. Can't wait to get my hands on that. And the Skywalker Saga coming sometime in 2020. And that will be all for the ads. So here's the set all built up. But of course, let's check out those amazing looking minifigures. And the droids aren't even that bad either. All right, so starting off with Ahsoka. She, basically, everything about this is perfect. It really resembles her look in season seven and it's really awesome to see one thing i know is uh I, they use the shock t kind of headpiece for her head tails and that the head tails are a little bit long but honestly i kind of put the smaller head tails piece that they had for her original minifigure and it really doesn't look as good as you'd think it would but uh so i think they they made the right choice with that but up on the forehead, as you can see, I think that's supposed to be like a communication, uh, kind, of, kind of the way she would communicate with the uh, other Mandalorians right there. It's printed really far up. It's supposed to be like uh, kind of in between the white part of her head and then the and the orange part. So that definitely looks a little bit strange. Not sure why they weren't able to make that just a little bit lower. I know that would add a lot of just extra white to the top of her head, but... I honestly probably would have looked better that way anyway. So really that's the only con with this minifigure. As you can see, her face print looks really good. The lines just seem really uh, stark and very defined. Uh, she does have an alternate facial expression where she doesn't look very angry, but more just like determined and focused. And yeah, it, it looks pretty cool. But her torso printing looks pretty great. I love all the uh, me metallic printings on there. You got like some subtle gold lines also got just uh, metallic uh, gray kind of gunmetal gray printing on there and really just resembles exactly what she was wearing in the Siege of Mandalore and uh, having dual molded legs would have been cool here with kind of the top half being black and then the bottom half being gray but that's just uh, that's just me being a little bit extra I don't know it'd probably too, be too expensive but what, what we do have is really amazing and I'm very happy to actually get an Ahsoka minifigure in this set and wow like i can't believe this year she does have 
two lightsabers with the blue instead of the green, which again is accurate. Also, to anyone who's wondering, this is what she looks like with the smaller headpiece, and then this is what she looks like with the big headpiece and the uh, original Clone Wars face. So if you're curious, that's what that does look like. Next up, we have a 332nd Trooper, or uh, known as the uh, Ahsoka Trooper, as it says on the box. But man, I hope he doesn't stay exclusive to this set, because that's going to be crazy. Everybody's going to want to, like, to, to charge extra on eBay for this set because it has an exclusive clone trooper. So I hope that maybe getting a, a, a battle pack with this, that, I mean, that would be cool. But even if they make more clone trooper sets based off season seven with some of these guys in it, that would be just amazing. But anyway, more about the, the, the trooper himself. The orange color, like the printing looks really good on the head. Like it just looks fantastic, like near perfect. But the orange just is a very vibrant color. And yes, the orange does match Ahsoka's skin color in the show, but uh, her skin really isn't this vibrant of an orange color. And I think the LEGO uh, Rebels Ahsoka tried to attempt at a darker orange color, but really, I think the truth is LEGO just doesn't have the right color. So I think they did their best at, with what they had, but still, it does look uh, just really flashy, and it really wasn't supposed to look like that in the show. But... Anyway, yeah, he does have that kind of gray in the cheeks area for to add some shading. I really love that upgrade. Uh, he's, of course, he does have the kind of new merge between the uh, movie accurate and Clone Wars accurate um, kind of printing for his torso, which looks really good. I'm, I'm really glad that they did that. Also, he's got, just got those amazingly printed legs with the even toe printing and then the infamous white hip piece, which really isn't that bad of a change. Uh, yeah, his printing is, of course, the same as the 501st Trooper. And then, of course, we have that new face print with uh, the darker skin tone ahead, which is really the upgrade that these minifigures needed. And, uh, yeah, I did mention in the 501st Battle Pack review that I wish the eyebrows were a little thicker, be like the angry clone head, but, you know, it's not that big of a deal. I'm just glad we got a different face. And he does come with a regular blaster. And then we get two of these guys. Uh, they're the different variant of the droid minifigure. We first saw this in 2019 in the newer Kashyyyk sets. They were labeled as like Kashyyyk droids, but I don't think that's what they are. And on this box it says that they're an AAT driver battle droid. And I think that's accurate. I'm pretty sure that's what he was originally supposed to be, but for some reason they called him a Kashyyyk battle droid. So yeah, they got it right this time. But anyway, the olive green torso looks pretty good as well as the printing on the head with even that darker green at the tip. But yeah, this is a really interesting looking droid. It uses the same pieces and everything, nothing new. Really waiting for them to mold the legs separately so they can walk. But uh, yeah, I guess that's not gonna happen this year. Hopefully it will sometime, but yeah, fingers crossed. He does have a gunmetal gray blaster, so that's kind of a cool touch, but uh, not sure why. But yeah, I mean, I'm not complaining. All right, so now for the AAT itself. So to start off, I'm just gonna like say, the barrel is not that bad, okay? Like stop hating on this set just because it has a long barrel. I almost feel like people have just like right off the bat made up their mind that this is a bad set just because other people said that they don't like how the barrel looks. Don't do that. Get this set for yourself. Like I'm sure you're going to. And like actually make your own judgments. Cause like, okay, I don't know how credible I am because this is my first AAT ever, but being my first AAT, I, I really think it's a good model. It it really gets the job done. You look at this and you're like, wow, that's that's a that's a nice AAT. At least at least I do. And I think you should too, because I'm even even if the barrel is kinda long, like literally just customize it. Lego kind of encourages building your own creations, so if you don't like how it looks, you can shorten it down however however you want, really. So, like, don't hate on this set just because the barrel's long, and to be honest with you, it's not that bad. But now, more about the build itself. Starting up at the top, I like the, the, the use of this fencing sword as an antenna, as well as just a smaller antenna down here. Uh, the top flips open like so, and there's no control panel on the inside at all, but you can fit a minifigure or a droid in there and he can kind of be sitting there you can't close it with him in there uh that's not possible unless maybe you folded him up but even then i think it might be a little too cramped in there even his arm like isn't really fitting yeah you can't you can't put him in here don't try it that's just that's just weird it's just meant for him to be kind of like poking out of the top and looking really aesthetic oh yeah this spins around really well 
unless it runs into things. And I really like that. The side view looks a little strange because I feel like the front is a little bit lacking. Like it needed to come this way a little bit more and just have a have a little bit more over here. I don't know. That's that could just be me, but I feel like the back side looks really good, but then the front is lacking just a little bit and I feel like just needed a little bit more space, I guess. And whatever these things are, I like the look of them. I don't know what they are, but for some reason I just I think they look really pleasing to me. But the one thing is is yeah, that that happens. They they move down. They're they're not stuck in place. They're just sitting there. And so that's definitely a flaw that probably could have been fixed somehow, but wasn't. The two only stickers in this set are these two. It's like, oh, come on, if you're only going to put two stickers in a set, just, you might as well make them prints. On the side, you get two identical uh, builds for little uh, secondary cannons. And at first glance, at least for me, I saw that and I was like, well, that's going to be really fragile because it looks like it's just like one stud of connection here. But then I realized, oh, there's a little clip here and the... Uh, kind of bar piece goes into this thing so that's that's not going anywhere that's not going anywhere easily it also gives it the ability to move up and down so that works really well i know a lot of people were complaining about there not being a blue stripe that goes down the middle but i mean come on this thing is like the piece they use for this is really rounded and you can't get a sticker on there without it being weird true lego could have printed it but we all know that lego doesn't print things so it's not that big a deal. I mean, come on. It's just an AAT. You can tell what it's, you can tell what it is. Don't hate on this set. I love this set. This thing flips open like so, and you've got some control panels in there, and those actually are prints. So technically, leg only prints if it's like on a rounded piece or if it's a tiny piece. But it's kind of funny that those are on the side because normally those pieces are both uh, kind of in, in front of you, but now they're at both of the droid's arms. So I wonder if he has like a swivel chair in there and he kind of takes turns pressing on each uh, control panel. Yeah, he can go in there like that and supposedly he's piloting. And that one does close, so that's good. Again, on this side, you have the cannons that do go up and down and are very firmly connected on there and I'm actually very surprised. Uh, I really like the use of these pieces. I think those look really good. Um, and then it also has that one thing over here that falls down, but now for the play feature. These little uh, spring-loaded missiles are, were really hid into the set really well, and as, as so were the triggers, which are these little gray pieces right here. So let's see if I can nail this clone trooper. No! I Did you see how close that was? There we go. And now both of those are lost. <laughs> One thing I did notice is that if you look hard enough, they use a, a brown jumper plate in there, which I know is a, is a small gripe, but I mean, come on, just use a navy blue so that you won't have an awkward brown color poking out from underneath. Also, you might have noticed, but uh, there are some of these kind of inverted smooth tiles on the bottom so that it does uh, kind of slide along on surfaces really well. And yeah, those just have always worked. Like, that's probably one of the best Lego pieces ever. All right, so final thoughts. This is one of my favorite Lego Star Wars The Clone Wars sets. Um, $40 for this, I will pay anything to get that Ahsoka and that Clone Trooper, but I do definitely think that LEGO designed this with the thought of making it $30, or maybe $35, and then they had the idea to add this Clone Trooper over here as well as Season 7 Ahsoka, and then they were like, hey, you know what? I think everyone's gonna love both of those minifigures, so let's jack the price up 10 more dollars, 10 or 5 more dollars, just because we know people are going to buy it, which is a good marketing move on LEGO's part, but also a little sneaky. And that's just my conspiracy on, on how that was, because, you know, technically this doesn't make a lot of sense as a set to have an AAT with two battle droids fighting the 332nd clone in Ahsoka, because these two are on Mandalore right now, and this, this is, this is not at all. And the box art even has kind of like the Clone Wars Season 1 kind of style with that kind of jungle or whatever, <laughs> wherever they are in a, a canyon or something. I don't know. I can't tell. But it looks like it's something from season one of Clone Wars. And yeah, so I definitely think that this wasn't originally supposed to have uh, these two minifigures over here, but then they ended up putting them in there just they, because they knew they could charge more for the set. But it's going to work because everyone's going to buy this. I encourage you buy this. I, I encourage you buy multiple of this so you can kind of get a few more of these clones and a few more Ahsokas because you're going to want a bunch of those. But thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, if it helped you to decide whether or not you're going to be getting this set, 
uh, please leave a like. And if you enjoy my content, be sure to subscribe. If you are, hit the bell icon to get a solid notification for every uh, video that I post in the future. Stay tuned for more, and I'll see you guys next time.